Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Robin Bush, and I am Director of Programs at Mid-Atlantic Arts. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm speaking to you today from Baltimore, Maryland, the traditional and ancestral lands of the Piscataway Kanoi Nation. And we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and future. I am a female with long brown hair, a black turtleneck on, and behind me I have a virtual background so that it appears that I am in a trendy mid-century apartment. I have a couch behind me with pillows uh, with a framed painting above it, and it's sunny. We're happy to have you with us today, and we are providing live closed captioning for today's webinar. We have Phil and Matila with us today providing captioning. So for those here with us live today, you can click CC or live transcript button and click show subtitles if you would like to display the live closed captions. With me today are colleagues who oversee grant programs with a performing arts focus here at Mid-Atlantic Arts. I'm going to have my colleagues all introduce themselves, and we'll start with Ernest. Hello, everyone. My name is Ernest Stewart. I am the program director for jazz here at uh, Mid-Atlantic Arts. I am a black male with medium length locks. I'm wearing a uh, button up shirt uh, and a tan blazer. Andrew. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Alness Olson, and I am Program Director, International and Mid Atlantic Arts. I use he, him pronouns, and I am a white man with short blonde hair. I'm wearing a blue dress shirt, and my background is uh, just a blurred white void. Uh, I'm joining the call today from Queens, New York. The traditional lands of the Lenape. Sarah L. Hey y'all, I'm Sarah Lewis. I use she and her pronouns. I'm the performing arts program director and the accessibility coordinator here at Mid-Atlantic Arts. I'm a white woman with short brown hair, wearing sort of a brick red color sweater with a mock neck turtleneck, neck, and a black bookshelf is over my right shoulder. Uh, Sarah T. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Tine, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm in Baltimore and for visual purposes, I am a black woman with my hair pulled back and a light gray um, sweater and a blurred background that just looks blue. Thanks everybody. And welcome to all of you joining us out there in Zoom land. Uh, we're gonna start by talking a little bit first about Mid-Atlantic Arts for those of you who might not be that familiar with us. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Mid-Atlantic Arts is a nonprofit regional arts organization, RAO, serving as a creative and financial partner for artists, arts presenters, and other types of arts organizations. As a nonprofit arts service organization, Mid-Atlantic Arts is one of the six regional arts organizations in the United States whose member states and territories include Delaware, the District of Columbia, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Virginia, and West Virginia. And to give you some idea of who we are within the arts service organization ecosystem, you have your local arts agencies, state arts agencies, regional arts organizations like us, and finally, the National Endowment for the Arts. All of us work together to make the U.S. a more vibrant place for the arts. Next slide. As nonprofits, the RAOs work in the space between the NEA and the state's arts agencies. 
We work together under the umbrella of the U.S. regional arts organizations on joint programs, projects, and advocacy. Each REO has their own mission and programming tailored to their region. If you aren't located in the Mid-Atlantic Arts region, you may be eligible for additional grant support from the REO where you are located. Next slide. So today's webinar is focused on Mid-Atlantic Arts uh, performing arts programs for presenters and performing artists. In today's presentation, we will only be talking about grant programs supporting the performing arts. Many performing artists and ensembles make their home in the Mid-Atlantic region, and creating access to performing arts opportunities has been one of Mid-Atlantic's central goals over the years. The region has deep cultural and historical ties to jazz, a wealth of folk and traditional practices, and is home to the largest concentration of cultural organizations in the United States. Mid-Atlantic Arts is an arts service organization at heart, and we offer a number of programs to serve different communities. We believe that investments in artists and arts organizations are key to building community. Now, if you'd like to learn more about our other programs and offerings that we aren't covering here, we invite you to check out our website. And Sarah is dropping that in the chat now. And if you'll be attending the APAP conference in New York next week, we would love to meet you in person. Um, you can find our booth at Rhinelander 183. And you don't need an appointment to stop by. You can swing by anytime. We'll all be there happy to chat with you. Next slide, please. So today's webinar is organized primarily by eligibility. So first, we will highlight programs for performing arts presenters nationwide. Then we will go over programs for performing artists nationwide. And by nationwide, we just mean that you do not need to be in the Mid-Atlantic Arts region to receive a grant. We will focus on the programs here at Mid-Atlantic Arts. And we'll also point you in the direction of our sister REOs to learn more about other programs that may be of interest. And finally, for those of you who are located in our region, uh, Sarah and Ernest will go over our performing arts programs for artists and presenters located here in the Mid-Atlantic Arts region. Finally, and this is a little bit of housekeeping, um, we'll wrap up with a Q&A at the end. And so if you have questions, I know that there are lots of folks here, so the chat might be pittering along. Um, if you have a Q&A, please pop, or just a question rather, go ahead and pop that in the Q&A section, and we will get to all of those questions uh, as we are able at the end of the webinar. So there is a Q&A within Zoom. You'll see the button. Uh, go ahead and add your questions there, and we will get to all of them at the end. All right. With that, I'm going to pass it over to Andrew. Hello again, everybody. I'm excited to share with you today about um, some of our programs for presenters nationwide, starting with uh, Performing Arts Global Exchange. Performing Arts Global Exchange, which we refer to as PAGE, is a Mid-Atlantic Arts Grant program in partnership with the National Endowment for the Arts. The program is open to performing arts presenters nationwide that are a 501c3 nonprofit or are a unit of state, local, or tribal government. PAGE is designed to increase the availability of international performing arts programming throughout the United States and to promote greater understanding of other cultures through the performing arts with an annually curated roster of international grant-supported performing artists. The focus region of the roster changes every year or two and is selected by Mid-Atlantic Arts and the NEA. After a region is selected, curators living and working in the region of focus who have expertise in the performing arts of that region are identified. And these curators nominate artists to be considered for the touring roster. 
We then gather feedback on these artists via an online survey of US presenters, and then Mid-Atlantic Arts and the National Endowment for the Arts determine the final roster. The roster for the upcoming program year is currently in development and will feature music, artists, and ensembles from South Korea. The selected ensembles will be announced in February 2023 and will tour the U.S. between January 1st, 2024 and August 31st, 2024. Don't worry, it's not too late to take part in the curation process. Uh, you can sign up for our emails at midatlanticarts.org slash newsletter to be included in the survey uh, that is sent to US presenters in the coming weeks. Presenting international artists offers an opportunity to engage in the rich diversity of cultural expression throughout the world, but it also requires resources that aren't always available. Travel expenses, visas, and routing are often barriers to presenting international artists, especially in the United States' more remote communities. PAGE seeks to ease some of those burdens by providing grant support to US presenters of up to 50% of the negotiated artist fee. PAGE especially seeks to support performances in communities with reduced access to international performing arts due to geography or other features. All funded engagements are required to include a public performance and a community engagement activity that provides audiences direct interaction with the visiting artists. This program is all about creating cross-cultural exchange between your audience and the international artists. So these engagement opportunities are extremely important to achieving that goal. Uh, next slide, please. So to receive a PAGE grant, you must first be a presenter located anywhere in the United States that is a 501c3 nonprofit or a unit of state, local, or tribal government. Fiscal sponsorship is not allowed for this program. There is not a formal application for the program. Um, so to get involved, you'll want to first review the page program guidelines and the South Korea artist roster when it is announced in February. Then contact the tour agent for the artists you are most interested in and negotiate the performance and artist involved community engagement activity with them. Send an offer letter to the agent by May 1st, 2023. You'll be tentatively recommended for a grant, again, up to 50% of the negotiated artist fee, and uh, will then be asked to fill out a brief online form. Mid Atlantic Arts will then contact you in June to verify, verify details and confirm your grant. Note that grant funds are limited, so presenters are encouraged to secure artist engagements as soon as possible. Additional details can be found at the link in the chat that was uh, posted by Sarah just a little bit ago. Additionally, I'll be hosting a webinar dedicated to this program uh, later this winter after the roster has been announced. Uh, and if you have any questions uh, after reviewing the program guidelines, please uh, send me an email. Robin. Thanks, Andrew. And I'll just say again, I know some of you guys just joined us. If you have questions, um, since the chat is kind of ticking by so quickly, we'd ask you to pop them into the Q&A section of Zoom, and we will address all of those questions at the end as well. All right. Um, other opportunities for presenters nationwide. So our sister regional arts organizations also have funding opportunities for performing arts presenters nationwide. So we've highlighted a few of those major programs here. We encourage you to check out these organizations' websites and contact respective staff to learn more about these opportunities in detail. New England Foundation for the Arts, or NIFA as you might know them, is home to the National Dance Project and National Theater Project, 
both vital programs committed to supporting the creation, presentation, and development of dance and theater. For presenters interested in international artists, uh, NIFA's Center Stage program in partnership with the U.S. Department of State's State provides heavily subsidized artist international engagements um, with an emphasis on cultural diplomacy and community engagement. Um, another program I hope you'll all check out, um, presenters in the room, is Western Arts Alliance's AIP Touring Fund. So this program encourages folks to invite and present indigenous artists in their communities and will match regional arts organization grant awards for engagement of US-based indigenous artists. So definitely reach out to Ed Bourgeois at WA to learn more or visit the WA website. There are many more opportunities um, some which might be really interesting to you, but might not fit squarely in the performing arts. So we encourage you to visit the US RAO website, and Sarah's going to drop that in the chat, the link there, um, to learn more about those opportunities. And with that, we're going to wrap up our opportunities for presenters located anywhere in the US. Now, presenters who are located in the Mid-Atlantic region, we will cover additional opportunities for you in just a few moments, so stick around. But now I'm going to pass it back to Andrew to talk about national programs for artists in the performing arts. Andrew? Next slide. So programs for performing artists nationwide. Uh, Mid-Atlantic Arts runs the U.S. Artists International Program. Uh, also known as USAI, and it's a program that supports U.S. artists that have an invitation to perform at an eligible international festival or global presenting arts market outside of the United States uh, with a travel grant of up to $18,000. This is a competitive grant program that supports professional performing artists of all discipline, disciplines and subdisciplines, including music, dance, theater, multidisciplinary artists from the entire United States and its territories. There are two to three application deadlines each year. Your next opportunity to apply is for the deadline on March 29th, 2023. This deadline will consider applications from artists with confirmed engagements between July 1st, 2023 and June 30th, 2024. When applying, you can request up to $18,000 in grant support toward eligible expenses as listed in the program guidelines. I want to emphasize that this is supplemental funding. For many artists, they are not depending entirely on grant funds to do their project. Due to limited funds, we rarely are able to support applications at 100% of the request amount. The program is funded by the National Endowment for the Arts, the Mellon Foundation, and the Trust for Mutual Understanding. Next slide. Now we have here a photo of a recent grantee, the band Making Movies out of Missouri. Uh, they were funded to perform at Viva Latino Festival in Mexico. Two men are centered in the photo, facing each other and playing their guitars on stage. Behind them is a crowd of people watching or recording the experience on their phones. Credit goes to Sebastian Najera. Next slide, thank you. Since 2006, USAI has sought to increase US artist performance opportunities abroad. In doing so, USAI contributes to the professional development of US artists. We believe there is inherent value in international performance opportunities. Artists with, and audiences can grow when these opportunities are supported. We also recognize that performing artists reliant upon touring to make their livelihoods face enormous challenges. The hope is that by performing at significant festivals and performing arts markets worldwide, Artists will be exposed to audiences and international presenters that will help sustain artists in the long term. 
U.S. Artists International hopes to lessen the stress surrounding opportunities abroad so that you can focus on what you do best, performing. We also highly value justice in the arts community and are committed to promoting the diverse voices that can contribute to creative expression in the United States. If you're doing exceptional work and have an eligible opportunity that will make an impact on your professional development, we strongly encourage you to apply. Most of our grantees don't have large budgets, but have already established a touring presence, either regionally, nationally, or internationally. Next slide. This photo is of the Parangal Dance Company out of California. Uh, they recently used USAI funds in support of their performance at a festival in Slovenia. In the photo, four dancers are featured in the foreground, wearing long skirts and brightly covered tops, holding golden fans in each hand. They are on an outdoor stage with polka dot lights being projected on the building behind them. Credit for the photo comes from Festival Lent Folk Art. Next slide. Before applying, you should review the program guidelines, which are available on our website to confirm your eligibility. On the screen are some of the very high level eligibility requirements for the program. The guidelines go in more depth, and I also host a webinar specifically about program eligibility. Sign up for the next one at the link in the chat. All right, next slide. So where could USAI take you? Since 2006, USAI has received applications from 45 states, BC, and US territories, and we've supported performances in 97 countries on six continents. More than $9 million have supported 1,300 plus US artist festival performances worldwide. As I've mentioned, additional details about the program can be found online at the link that is being dropped in the chat. After reviewing program materials, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And again, uh, the link in the chat will take you to a registration page where you can sign up for our next eligibility webinar. Robin? Thanks, Andrew. Our sister regional arts organizations also have funding opportunities for performing artists nationwide. So we've highlighted a few of the major programs on this slide here. If you do have questions about um, the programs that Andrew's just covered, feel free to drop them in the Q&A section and we will get to those um, at the end of the session. So we encourage you to check out these organizations' websites to learn more about these opportunities in detail. The Jazz Road Program at South Arts is a unique artist-centric program providing critical support to jazz musicians nationwide. With tour support of up to $15,000 and creative residency support of up to $40,000, uh, if you are a jazz artist or represent artists who are, this program is definitely worth checking out. I also mentioned uh, NIFA's NDP and NTP programs earlier uh, for presenters, but the program involvement can be a real game changer for artists as well. Visit NIFA's website for details on both of those programs. The Advancing Indigenous Performance Program is a multi-year program providing mentoring, travel support, and professional development opportunities for Indigenous artists. Applications for Native Launchpad are open through February 1st, so there's still time to apply. You can visit WAS website to learn more. And for artists who are interested in showcasing opportunities, especially those folks that want to grow their careers abroad, the Performing Arts Discovery Program promotes U.S. artists to international programmers. So this program does have a deadline uh, for applications tomorrow. So head over to WAS website, Western Arts Alliance, um, if you're interested. 
And with that, we'll wrap up our opportunities for artists located anywhere in the United States. And now we're going to shift gears and focus on opportunities for presenters and artists based in the Mid-Atlantic region. Sarah? Thanks, Robin. And hi again, everyone. It's great to be here with you today. As Robin mentioned at the beginning of our time together here, uh, Mid-Atlantic Arts is one of six regional arts organizations. Each of the RAOs have national programs that serve artists and or presenters across the country. And so far in today's presentation, you've heard about how Mid-Atlantic Arts national opportunities for presenters and artists work. As you might expect, each regional arts organization also offers focused grant programming available only to applicants based in our respective geographic regions. Mid-Atlantic Arts geographic region includes Delaware, the District of Columbia, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Virginia, and West Virginia. For the rest of today's presentation, we're going to focus on grant opportunities available to performing arts presenters based in each one of these states or jurisdictions. If you are a presenter outside of the Mid-Atlantic region, I encourage you to find your RAO's website and see what presentation available, uh, opportunities are available to you. You can find the link to all RAO sites at usregionalarts.org. The link is going in the chat now. If you are an artist or artist manager who's interested in touring in the Mid-Atlantic region, no matter where you're based, I encourage you to stick around to get familiar with the uh, grant opportunities that we offer to presenters in the region. Although these grants are made directly to presenters, it can be to your benefit to know what opportunities presenters you're in dialogue with are eligible for as you negotiate details for an upcoming Mid-Atlantic region tour. I'll talk a bit more about this at the end of the presentation. Finally, I want to mention a few of Mid-Atlantic Arts other regional offerings that aren't explicitly related to the performing arts for presenters. First, we offer training in accessibility and disability justice to state arts agency staff, as well as other constituents in the region. Check out a recording of our most recent conversation with members of the Mid-Atlantic Accessibility Resource Committee, which we hosted in partnership with Americans for the Arts, at the link going in the chat now. We also manage two artist fellowship programs for artists based in Delaware and New Jersey. If you're an artist based in either of those two states, check out our website to learn more. That link is going in the chat now too. Finally, we have grant programs specifically for artists and presenters working in folk and traditional forms, which can include folk and traditional performance. If you are working in a form that could be classified as folk and traditional, I encourage you to check out our website to learn more about those programs. And once again, links going in the chat now. Now I'm gonna turn it back over to my colleague, Andrew, to share about eBear Exchange. Right, so I'm excited to start our regional programs for presenters, uh, share some details with you about a new program this year called Eber Exchange. Eber Exchange is a grant program designed to increase availability of international music programming from Latin America and the Iberian Peninsula throughout the Mid-Atlantic region and to promote a greater understanding of other cultures through the performing arts program provides fee support grants of up to 50% of the negotiated artist fee to presenters that are nonprofits or a unit of state, local, or tribal government. Presenters must be located in the Mid-Atlantic region and contract an Eber Exchange roster artist for a public performance and community engagement activity. Support for Eber Exchange is provided by the National Endowment for the Arts, in collaboration with Iber Musicas. Next slide. This year's roster features three ensembles. 
La Banda Morisca from Spain, Caña Dulce y Caña Brava from Mexico, and the Alejandro Bridges Quartet from Brazil. Artists will tour between July 1st, 2023 and June 30, 2024. Limited grant funds remain, so presenters are encouraged to secure artist engagements as soon as possible. Contact the agent directly to discuss the performance and engagement activity and submit an offer letter to them by April 25. Mid-Atlantic Arts will contact presenters in May to fill out a brief online form and grants will be confirmed in June. Additional details are available online at the link in the chat, uh, and we'll be getting information about the artists up shortly. Um, additionally, if you are attending APAP, I know that um, you're likely to be able to set up a meeting with these agents. So just reach out to them um, and you can connect at APAP. If you have any other questions, uh, please send me an email. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague, Ernest, to talk about the Chaz Touring Network. Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Ernest Stewart, and I'm the I'm the program director of jazz for Mid Atlantic Arts. Uh, thanks again for attending. Earlier, I forgot to mention that I'm joining from New York. I got a little excited describing my outfit, so my apologies. Um, the Jazz Tour Network, or JTN, is a presenter-based membership program that's designed to expand the presentation of jazz throughout the Mid Atlantic region. The program achieves this objective by providing performance fee subsidies to network members for engagements that are part of network block book tours. Establishing block book tours requires members to work collaboratively to nominate and vote for artists. Members are currently eligible for up to $3,000 per year to subsidize uh, performances. Funds can be used to subsidize up to 50% of artist fees. JTN funded engagements must include at least one public performance as well as a community engagement activity. Additionally, JTN members who act as lead presenters by negotiating and initiating the logistics of block book tours on behalf of their network colleagues receive an additional $100 for each organization participating on a tour, excluding their own organization. There are currently 25 member organizations within the Jazz Touring Network. Membership criteria prioritizes performing arts presenters with little or no experience in presenting jazz. But we also encourage applicants from experienced jazz presenters seeking to strengthen their programming. The network's membership applications open in early August. Uh, applicants will be notified of their approval or declination in mid-October. You can find more information in the JTN membership guidelines located on our website. The link is being posted in the chat. And now I'll be passing back to my colleague, Sarah. Thanks, Ernest. I'm going to talk to you all now about Mid-Atlantic Tour, which is a grant opportunity for presenters in Mid-Atlantic Arts geographic region. The program supports touring of exemplary mid-Atlantic based artists and companies um, to mid-Atlantic region presenters. This year's roster was selected with guidance of a team of curatorial advisors to ensure that the roster represented a breadth of locations where artists are based, a breadth of artistic genre, and a breadth of artistic identity. It's funded through the NEA's regional touring program. And uh, as I mentioned, it supports robust touring of select artists. We'll look at them uh, in a, another slide or two. With at least two engagement activities in each presenter's community, one of which must be a public performance. The current roster is booking for engagements for FY24, which runs from July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. You can review the guidelines for the program at Mid-Atlantic Arts website. Um, the guidelines are the key resource for determining eligibility and process for Mid-Atlantic Tour. Read it ahead of setting up a meeting with a tour manager. The guidelines are available on our website and the link is going in the chat now. On this photo, 
Oh, and excuse me, I should say also that we had a webinar in mid-November outlining the logistical details of the Mid-Atlantic Tourist Program. The webinar is recorded and available on our website under the program page. We'll also put that link in the chat now, and I recommend you check it out if you haven't done so already and you're interested in participating in this program. So on this slide, we're seeing a photo from a Mid-Atlantic Tours supported engagement of artist Charlotte Blake Alston, uh, who was a roster artist in a prior cycle at Montgomery County Community College in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. In this photo, we see two women standing in front of artist Charlotte Blake Alston, who is seated behind a table with instruments on it. The woman on the right is gently holding the hand of Miss Alston and smiling tremendously. The credit for this photo goes to Lou Liguori Photography. So how it works. Mid-Atlantic Tours maximum potential grant amount is made up of two components. The first is a fee subsidy amount of up to 50% of the negotiated artist fee. But keep in mind that we may not be able to offer that full 50% depending on how the tour manager is allocating their funding. The second component is for other eligible project expenses up to $2,000. The full grant amount must be matched on a dollar for dollar basis with non-federal funds. The Mid-Atlantic Tours roster for 23-24 is listed here. And I really must say that each of these artists are uniquely wonderful. If you don't know their work, even if you're not looking for another artist in the upcoming season, I encourage you to check them out. You can check them out on the roster. Their work samples are terrific. They're awesome. Um, I am uh, happy to say that the roster this year includes Kalpuli Mexican Dance Company, DuPont Brass, from China to Appalachia, Javon Herman, the legendary Ingramette, and Martha Redbone. Again, full roster information, including contact information for each of these artists' tour managers is available on midatlanticarts.org under the Mid-Atlantic Tours tab. You can see also photos, fee ranges, media samples, everything you might need to get a sense of which artists might be a good fit for your community. The link to the, uh, to the page is going in the chat now. Now I'm going to talk about another program called Arts Connect. Arts Connect supports touring projects collaboratively developed by presenters working together in the Mid-Atlantic region. The program asks presenters based in two or more Mid-Atlantic region states or jurisdictions to work together to engage the same artist or company during the project period, encouraging collaboration and creating touring opportunities for artists and companies. The program is funded through the NEA's Regional Touring Program, and the current open grant opportunity is for proposed projects taking place in FY24, which again runs from July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. In November, I had a webinar that went over the Arts Connect program in detail, including information about the program structure, guidelines, application structure, and adjudication process. In that presentation, we also looked at the application itself through Mid-Atlantic Arts Smart Simple uh, platform. If you missed it, don't worry, it was recorded. We're posting a link to the recording in the chat. And if you can't find it at the program, or and you can also find it at the program page at midatlanticarts.org. On this slide, we see an Arts Connect supported engagement with Nritri Graham Dance at Moss Arts Center in Blackburn, Virginia. A dancer wearing a red sari stands in the foreground in a deep squat, elbows bent, looking forward. She's teaching a class and students around her mimic her position. Credit for this photo goes to Dan Maroli. So Arts Connect is made up of, again, two uh, parts, the grant amount. The first is a fee subsidy amount of up to 50% of the negotiated artist fee, up to $10,000. And the second component is other eligible expenses up to $2,000 for a maximum potential grant award of $12,000. You don't have to apply for that maximum grant amount if you have a project with an artist fee less than $20,000. 
For example, if you had an engagement with an artist fee of $8,000, you could apply for a maximum of $6,000 total. That would be $4,000, half the artist fee, plus $2,000 of other eligible expenses. The full grant amount does have to be matched on a one-to-one -one basis, again, with non-federal funds. Arts Connect, uh, as I mentioned, is a consortium-based program, so it requires a minimum of two presenting partners from two or more mid-Atlantic region, states, or jurisdictions, uh, presenting the same artist within the same project, within this project period. One presenter should be designated the lead, meaning they'll collect some additional information from the artist, including a company bio, a description of the works to be performed, and work samples. The lead presenter does not however, serve as a fiscal conduit. The full consortium needs to present the same artist, as I mentioned, but they don't have to present the same work and the tour does not have to be contiguous. It just all has to take place within that FY24 time block. Someone in the consortium, and it doesn't have to be the lead presenter, does need to post the project to the projects and development listing prior to the deadline of February 16th, 2023, for the project to be eligible for Arts Connect support. We're posting the link to the projects and development listing in the chat now. If you have any questions about Arts Connect at all, you're welcome to reach out to me at any time. And now we're going to move on to special presenter initiatives. Special presenter initiatives or SPI is available to small or mid-sized performing arts presenters based in Delaware, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, West Virginia, and the native nations that share this geography. Presenters based in any of these states or jurisdictions can receive funding support for up to two performing arts engagements that they are planning in the upcoming season. These engagements must also include an engagement activity that supports meaningful exchange in the presenter's community. The current open grant opportunity is for proposed projects taking place in FY24, which again runs from July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. The artists can be based anywhere worldwide. Each proposed funding engagement does need to include a public performance and an additional engagement activity, as I mentioned, and uh, more information, including full eligibility details can be found on the program guidelines page available at midatlanticarts.org. On this slide, we see a compilation of photos from an SPI supported engagement of Amy K. Borman at the Caribbean Music Center of St. Croix in Frederickstead in the Virgin Islands. These photos show several middle and high school aged students engaged in music education in both indoor and outdoor settings. And credit for these photos goes to David Berg. SPI Maximum potential grant amounts are once again made up of two components, the first being that fee subsidy up to 50% of the negotiated artist fee, which can be up to $2,000 in Delaware, DC, and West Virginia, or up to $5,000 in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. The uh, other eligible expenses component is once again up to $2,000, and the full grant amount needs to be matched dollar for dollar with non-federal funds. Once again, any questions about SPI, uh, please reach out to me, slewidis at midatlanticarts.org. So that was our last program info slide. But before we move into questions, I want to talk a bit more about how artists or artist managers can relate to Mid-Atlantic Arts regional opportunities for presenters. So for Mid-Atlantic tours, a, a grants are made directly to presenters from Mid-Atlantic Arts, but we will be opening another roster artist interest form for the 24-25 touring period in summer of 2023. So if you're interested, if you're an artist and you're interested in being considered for the next round of the Mid-Atlantic Tours roster, make sure to keep an eye out for that interest form. You can make sure that you see it by making sure you're signed up for our mailing list. For the other programs, artist selection is based on presenters' curatorial vision. It is up to the presenters to select the artists they apply with. 
However, if you're in conversation with a presenter in the Mid-Atlantic region and they don't know about these programs, you can let them know to be in touch with us and we can talk with them about how to take advantage of our funding opportunities to present your work. We welcome you um, artists and uh, artist managers to reach out to any one of us on staff to set up a time to talk and strategize about how these programs might support your touring in the Mid-Atlantic region. All right, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Robin to begin uh, working on questions. Thanks, Sarah. All right, well, we really appreciate everyone being here today. Um, what questions can staff answer for you? I'll invite staff to turn their cameras back on. Um, now, there have been some questions popping up in the Q&A, and we've been trying to answer those as we've gone along, but uh, feel free to go ahead and, and type those into the Q&A feature of Zoom now. Um, certainly, if you're, if you're not able to type at this time and you'd rather raise your hand, we, I think we can also um, do that as well. So while folks are typing their questions, we encourage you to sign up for the Mid-Atlantic Arts newsletter on midatlanticarts.org if you aren't receiving emails from us already and we can drop that link in the chat and when you sign up for the newsletter online you will receive targeted emails for grant opportunities and reminders about upcoming program deadlines so we don't automatically add you to our mailing list for signing up for this webinar so please uh, just make sure to sign up if you'd like to receive those updates um, and when you visit the website, if you if you don't have a link right in front of you, you can just click on the upper right hand corner where it says sign up for newsletter um, or that link that Sarah T just dropped in the chat. Um, and for those of you headed to NYC next week for APAP, uh, please stop by our booth in Rhinelander booth number 183. We would love to meet you in person and talk more about your work. Um, let's go ahead and get into those questions. 